Hey guys, what is up? Martin here from RV Street. Guess where I am? I'm on the roof again. And today I'm going to be tackling our fiberglass roof. Details coming up on RV Street. Thought I'd show you guys from the roof here. This is where we are in our winter RV spot. Um, I showed you a video of how we ended up buying this place last year. And so I thought I'd just give you a quick little aerial view here of the park itself. And no, I don't have a drone. So this is just gonna have to suffice. <laughs> okay, let's get right to it. As a lot of you know, before we went full time, I spent 18 months getting our rig ready to go full time. I mean, I did just pages and pages of maintenance items and upgrades, and I've got videos on that if you want to see it. But those that have watched me, you know that I've done these things. And one of the things that I did during that 18 months is I spent three weeks on the roof. I totally went through the entire roof. Now we have a full solid sheet fiberglass roof. In my opinion, man, there is nothing like a fiberglass roof. Uh, if you're looking for an RV, you're kind of thinking about floor plans and this and that, I mean, those things are important, but I'll tell you what, a fiberglass roof is about as good as you can get. They're very sturdy and they're easy to keep clean. This video is gonna be broken down into two parts. Part one, I'm going to take the camera off the tripod here and we're going to walk around and I'm going to show you all the different things that I did to the roof during that 18 months. The second part of this video is now how to maintain it afterwards because roofs need annual maintenance. You need to get up on the roof and you need to be looking at different things once a year at least. Now, because my roof, I've done such a uh, meticulous job of all the different seams and my sealants and all that I know I can go a whole year without having to come up here every six months and look at it let's get started and we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you what we've done so for those of you who don't know us uh, we have a Winnebago 35 F a Vista 35 F as I just said we have a full fiberglass roof what I did is I took all of the existing coating that was on the roof, the factory coating, I used about an 80 grit sandpaper and I came in here and I just did a little swirl like this and roughed up the old surface, okay? And I did that all the way down. I redid my front and rear caps. So I took a metal putty knife and I removed all of the old Dicor self-leveling sealant and I put a piece of four inch Dicor tape all the way across the front and rear cap and then I covered it with additional uh, Dicor self-leveling sealant. I did the same thing on every single fixture. I took a putty knife and I scraped off all of the old sealant and took it right down to the roof. Cleaned it all up with alcohol and a little bit of acetone to really get this surface clean. Then I came back and I laid in a real nice thick new layer of the self-leveling sealant. I, this is the antenna right up here near the front cap. I've put additional uh, airflow vent covers on here, but before I did that, your regular vents I came in here and again, removed all of the old sealant along here and put all new sealant. You know how the factory vents, they usually are a, like a three or a four inch pipe that comes up and it's got a cap on it. That's what we had. And they do not vent well at all. They just don't vent. So I cut those off and I put these 360s on here. This is what they call a 360 vent. And they call them 360s because the air, you see this little venturi right here? 
the wind comes in from all directions and it, it causes a draft, kind of like a chimney, and it draws the uh, fumes and the vapors and the odors out from underneath in the vent pipe. And I'm going to tell you what, these things right here, uh, what an improvement over those stupid factory caps. This is a nice upgrade. These things are cheap, but you know, you got to get up on the roof and you got to cut off the old one. And again, I put on new sealant, put on the new 360s, and I've got two of them because we have a bath and a half. So I put on that one there and I put this one on here for the back bathroom. On the ladder, you can see I mounted my Wii Boost. This is my cellular booster. And I mounted it right here on the top of my ladder. I ran the cable down here and it goes down the side and it goes right down the seam of the back of the motor home. I did the back cap the same exact way I did the front cap. This area right here is the shower skylight. Again, you can see I did all the new sealant here. But this one area right here, as you guys know, a lot of heat really pours through these things in the summertime. When I had my window shades made for the windshield in the cabin area, I also had these guys make me a shower skylight uh, shade and it snaps up underneath. Now I wanted to block a lot of that that sun and that heat that comes in there which of course makes the air conditioners work harder. But in addition to that I taped this off and I painted the top of this with the same material that I did the roof in which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. But I left this little bit here you can see there's about two inches and an inch down there. That allows enough sunlight to come into the skylight and into the shower area but 80 90 percent of the sun that beats on this thing is blocked by this coating and the sunscreen up underneath so you can see right here i went ahead and i totally coated the entire roof the product that i used was dicor fiberglass coating it comes in gallon cans and i bought two gallons and you apply it with a roller. And the reason I wanted to go with this uh, material is number one, it makes cleaning this thing a breeze. Number two, it doesn't make it slippery up here when I'm up here. Uh, I wanna show you a little, um, getting the light here. Can you see that texture there? That texture comes from when I sanded it and the roller that I applied it with. So this whole roof now it's not only easy to clean, rough to where you're not slipping, but one of the main things is, is that it reflects a lot of heat. Man, this white roof, it just saves a ton of heat getting into the coach from the roof. So it's very reflective and it bounces off the sun. The way I applied this uh, Dicor fiberglass coating is, is once I had sanded it and roughed it up, then I came back with some rags and some acetone and cleaned it thoroughly. Then I came back and put the fiberglass coating in a bucket with a rack inside, a little roller rack. And then I used my pole and a three quarter inch nap roller. And you start from the front and you work your way back. That way you don't get yourself in a corner and you can actually go down the ladder when you get to the back. To apply this material, you have to do it in the sun, and it has to be warm. Uh, 75, 80 degrees is about the best. I was in Houston at the time when I did it, and it was about probably 85 or 90. But it has to be warm, and you spend you know, your time prepping it and getting it all ready to go, and then you wait until you get that nice uh, weather window and then you spend the morning and put on the first coat then you can come back about four or five o'clock and put on the second coat let that cure overnight and then I came back the next day and I put on a third coat that third coat came out of the second gallon that I bought I had a half a gallon left, and that half a gallon I used for touch-ups, which I'm going to end up showing you here on the maintenance part of this uh, roof. 
After I did all the rolling and put on three coats, I came back by hand and I brushed out the sides. Let me show you what I did there. I came back with a two inch tapered brush and I brushed and painted on that sealant on this roll part right here. You see that? And I went all the way down, right down to this point here. Where this fiberglass roof rolls over, it goes in behind this piece of uh, metal guttering. This is actually what fastens it and holds the whole roof into place here. And this is the area right here where you have to look once a year and do maintenance. The, this seam right here is where you need to reseal uh, or look to see if it needs to be resealed. Winnebago calls for uh, the owner to check it every six months. But again, I know how I have done all of this and once a year is fine for me. So I'm going to do my best to show you how you take care of that. I've already came up here and examined everything and I found a couple of small areas. I decided, you know, I need to show everybody how to do this. Now you can see right here, I mean, this, this material that I've used here, this is not going anywhere. I found the most awesome product uh, to use on this seam right here. But initially, I used another good product. It's called Nuflex 640. You see that little crack right there? When you push in, it's ever so slight. Do you see that? But it needs tending to. You take care of something when it's small now before it turns into a big problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig this little bit of area out and I'm going to apply this material down in there. Now the material I'm going to use is this Loctite window and door siding polyurethane sealant. I'm going to tell you man, this stuff is awesome. But the key thing about this product is this polyurethane sealant. That means that it's going to flex. Okay, we don't want something that's going to dry hard and get solid. We want it to stay pliable so that as the, as the coach rocks and rolls down the road and the sun is expanding and contracting and temperatures and so forth, you want that kind of sealant. Okay, so let's get started and let me show you how, to, how this can easily be dug out and we're going to put in some new sealant. Oh man, I forgot to bring up a couple of tools. And I am not going to go down that ladder again. I'm just going to go ahead and jump right down there and get this done. Ready? One, two, three. Oh yeah. RV Street jumping off the top of a motorhome. Gotta love it. By the way, don't do this at home. Okay, so you can see here, this is all just as solid as a rock. But right here where I showed you, I'm going to take a screwdriver here. Can you see that? And it's only like from here to here. So you can see it's cracking up to about here. It's a little loose. So I came back a little bit further from there. And I just took my razor knife. And now I am cutting right up against the fiberglass roof. You see that? And then I can just kind of cut out there and cut out here. Oh, see, it's a little loose right there, too. This is my new stuff, that polyurethane stuff right here. Man, I'll tell you what, this stuff is so awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and come all the way back to there. Let's just go ahead and just replace this piece. And I'm going to go ahead and continue digging this and cutting this out. And then I'll get right back with you. Okay, so I've already cut that out. And you can see by my hand, you know, we're talking about maybe a six inch section. I went ahead and dug it all the way out. Remember I said I spent three weeks working on my roof? Well, what I did is I dug out all of it. I went around the entire coach and I dug out all that old factory uh, sealant that was in here because it was, I mean, this, this whole roof all along was just all soft and some of it was pushing in like this here. And I thought, you know what? I'm taking it all out and I'm starting all over. So that, that was quite a chore. Uh, that probably itself took uh, several days to get this all out. But then you've got an all nice clean surface and then you can just take and squeeze that material down in there. And once it bonds, 
man, it's good to go. Okay, so I got my polyurethane sealant in my caulk gun and I've cut my tip off here, a very small tip at an angle. You guys are really ought to try doing this stuff sometimes. Doing a video and doing this stuff, this is not easy. But I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna squirt and I'm gonna push and shove that stuff all the way down in that seam. I put a piece of tape down here on the gutter and then I put a piece up here so I can make a nice uh, bead here and not smear it all up and up and into this area so I'm gonna go ahead and squirt that in there now I decided to go ahead and add a little bit more tape on this side over here because I want to overlap onto this side over here you can see how I just kind of pushed it in there I actually shoved that little plastic tip down into the crack to kind of you know open that up and shoot that stuff down in there and now I'm going to use my rubber glove and some paint thinner and and smooth that out okay you see that I smoothed it all out with my finger and some paint thinner look how nice that looks I'm going to remove the tape and then do a final smooth out okay so there's the final smooth out check that out so tomorrow after this cures I'll come back like I said and I will touch this area up on the on this curved part with my touch-up uh, roof paint okay so we looked at a lot of stuff up there and I showed you a lot of different steps and things and so if you decide that you want to do your fiberglass roof like I did here with the fiberglass coating uh, I want to summarize right here all the different steps on how you prepare and apply because prepping the roof, as you know, whenever you're painting anything, prepping is very important. So I've written it down right here so we get it right. So here is how you prep and apply this stuff to the roof. Number one, you wash the roof very well. Okay, get all the nonsense and dirt and everything off to start with. Number two, remove any and all old flaky material up there. I don't care what it is what it takes, a hard brush, a, a putty knife, whatever. Remove all of the old flaky stuff. Number three, if you wanna do, redo, I should say, all of your sealant around your vents and antennas and all that stuff like you saw I did, now's the time to do that too. Take your knife and it's not that hard to get this stuff off. It'll take time, but, cause you got a lot of vents and stuff, but get it off now. Take it all the way down to the roof. Then take some 80 grit sandpaper. Do not put this on a vibrating sander or a power sander. I'm talking about by your hand. Starting from the front, working your way to the back and using a circular random pattern and sand with 80 grit sandpaper. It's going to scuff and rough up the uh, surface of the uh, fiberglass roof. The next thing you want to do since you just sanded it is you're going to have dust everywhere. Get up there with a bucket of water and some towels and wipe off and get all that dust off of the roof. The next thing is a product that I did not uh, touch on up there, but before you put on the fiberglass uh, coating, you want to use the Dicor Fiberglass Clean and Prep. It comes in a jug. The paint comes in regular paint gallon uh, cans. But the clean and prep solution, you, you need to use that also. So you buy one of those two gallons of coating. You take the clean and prep solution, pour it in a bucket, and again, get on the roof with some clean towels, put it in there, and rinse it, and you want to wipe the uh, roof off with all of that. You do not want to put it in there with a mop and start sloshing it on the roof and cleaning it that way because you're going to get splatter off the, doing it that way and some of it you'll risk getting some on the side of your coach or on your caps and you don't want that to happen. It's just best to do it by hand. So after you've wiped off the roof with the clean and prep, now you come back again with acetone. More clean rags, go to Home Depot, get a can or two of acetone and you want to now clean the entire roof. That includes the coved and curved parts all the way from the front to the back. Now that roof is ready to paint, okay? It is clean, it's etched, it's sanded, it's got new sealant, you're ready to go. 
You want to make sure that you have a two-day window where you're not going to have any rain or any morning dew in the morning. Pour your uh, fiberglass coating into the bucket and now you're going to take and roll in a random pattern using a crisscross. So you're going to go crisscross this way and then come this way and just working your way side to side, back, front to back using a crisscross random pattern. You apply your first coat in the morning. Six hours later, you can come back now with a second coat. Let it cure overnight. The following morning, you apply the third coat and let it dry. Now you're gonna have about a half a gallon of, of a coating left over. That's where you take your two inch tapered paintbrush and you come up on the roof and now you do the side part, this, that, the, the curved, you do both sides of those three coats. And you'll notice when I showed you all those different uh, ceiling vents and stuff like that that I did up there, did you notice that none of those were cracked? Yeah. And the reason is, this is why I decided to do the whole entire roof. I got rid of the old sealant, put on the new sealant, and then covered that with this fiberglass coating. That fiberglass coating has protected that for years and years, and it prevents it from cracking. That's why I emphasize, if you're going to do something, just do it right. And you won't ever have to worry about that sealant, you know, cracking every six months or whatever. And just remember, everything that I covered up here and all these different items uh, in the order that you're supposed to do it, I have it in our Amazon store. All you got to go is go to the everything on the roof category. I have them all lined up right there. Easy peasy. Now, one thing I do want to emphasize, let's just say that you do not want to go through the effort of doing your roof like I did. Well, you still got to get up there anyway once a year and check your uh, roof seals, right? Like I showed you. If you're going to fix those seams, use the polyurethane sealant that I showed you, but also take up with you a tube of the Dicor self-leveling uh, lap sealant. So while you're up there on the roof and you see some uh, your old uh, sealant around your vents or your antenna or your refrigerator or whatever, all the things that are up there that are sealed, take a look at those too. And if they start to crack a little bit, just take that lap sealant and just go right over the old sealant where the cracks are, okay? But make sure that you do that uh, and check that at least once a year. If your roof is kind of iffy, you've had problems, I check it every six months. Totally stripping, sanding, coating this roof and everything like I've done here uh, with the Dicor fiberglass coating. I know this is a job that's not for everybody. Okay, some of you have health issues. Uh, you can't get up on the roof. You're afraid to get on the roof. I totally get that. But I know that there are some of you, probably many of you, that can tackle a job like this and you'd like to spend the time, the labor, and the effort to redo your roof, do your seams, sand, and put this coating on, and you're done. Uh, the reflectivity is awesome, it's easy to wash, and it's super safe to walk on. So for those of you that really want to kick it up a notch and get your roof looking good, this is the way to do it. I'm speaking from experience. So there you have it, guys. I really hope that uh, this uh, instructional video uh, will uh, help you decide on whether you want to take care of your roof this way, and especially the seams. If you don't want to redo your roof, the way I showed you to do those seams is the way to do it. Those of you who haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing to our channel is free and you can learn a lot from these videos and keep yourself from going through the school of hard knocks. You hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell off to the right so you'll be notified the next time we upload our next video. We have our Amazon store finally, yay. So all the stuff that I use in all of our videos is in our Amazon store. You can find the links and other videos and all that stuff in the description text below. So that's it for now guys, until next time, this is RV Street, stick around. <laughs>